Welcome back to the East Regional. Al McGuire, this one is going to be low scoring. It, well, if it's going to be low scoring in the 50s and low 60s, then John Chaney's Temple's Owls will win. If it gets to the high 60s, low 70s, look for the Boilers and Gene Cady's team to win. And let's get a quick word from Armin Gattain. Thanks, Bernie. You mentioned John Chaney. He really hasn't been feeling well at all. He missed yesterday's practice, went back to the hotel with flu-like symptoms. In fact, spent the day in the hotel today just resting, not feeling well at all. Back to you. All right, Armin. A foul called on the Temple Owls. Tent can say they're traveling. No foul, just a turnover. Temple 4-3 with the lead. 15.47 to go. From the corner, there's Cornell for three. They got to know where Cornell is, and John Shane to be very upset. That's the second three by Cornell. He already has more points than he scored in the last ball game. Now Mayfield picks up Sanchez. Here's Mark Karcher. Guarded by Eldridge. Sanchez knocked backwards. Lide's body's too big underneath there. If he gets the ball, it's just a simple cook back. Foul called on Temple. Second foul called on Lamont Barnes. Now, normally at Temple, when you pick up your second foul, he takes you out of the ball game. I'm surprised he hasn't taken Barnes out yet. Into the corner again. Cornell double team. Ball on the floor. Cardinals on the floor as well. And this will be Temple ball. Early going in the second semifinal in the East Regional of the Continental Arena. Jerron Cornell, two three-pointers for the Purdue Boilermakers. They come in as the 10th seed facing a Temple team that knocked off Cincinnati, the number three seed in Boston last week. Now Pepe Sanchez in a 6-4 game, the Argentine point guard. What's very important here to Temple is that their starting center, Barnes, has picked up the second foul. That means he will not play again until the second half. Basket is good for three. Karcher gives Temple a 7-6 lead. There's Tony Mayfield. Back it comes. Greg McQuay into the corner for Cardinal. Takes the three. Kansas. Three threes for Purdue. Well, Cardinal can hit the three from the corner or the top of the key. The angle, he doesn't bury it so well. Karcher at the other end off the front rim. Rebound. Jerron Cornell. Here's Mayfield. Dishes back nicely to Jerron Cornell. The way to, beat, the way to beat Temple is to get down there before they set up their zone. Here's a fast break. The numbers are perfect. There's no possible way they can defend against it. Nice kickoff. Finished. Foul is on Karcher, his second. That's going to send Jerron Cornell, number 22, to the line. For the old-fashioned three-point play, he's got two threes from downtown already. Rebound, Karcher for Temple. Now Sanchez, picked up by Tony Mayfield. Ryan Brokenboro, one of the seniors for the Temple Owls. Lyde and McQuay having a rest in the match underneath. Lyde's body, as I said earlier, is just too big for McQuay. If he get Lyde, the ball is going to a put back. That one turned over. 11-7 in the early going. Turnovers even at 4-4. Cornell with six points in the early going out. That last turnover created John Shaney to loosen his tie. <laughs> Once he loosens his tie, now the next time problem comes in about five, six minutes to take off his jacket. But the tie is now loosened. Here's a nice turnover. The numbers aren't there. Have to reset. Karcher off the dribble. Cameron Stevens is on the floor, and he picks him up defensively. Now Lyde kicks it out to Broken Burrow Sanchez. Penetration kick out, Karcher, in and out. Rebound, Lyde, he's got a strong start in this game. Uh, big body, not only his size, it's the size of his body. There's a, little, uh, there's a little bit of jarring inside there, which will create a technical foul or a foul each way. But Lyde ends up getting this rebound. Once he gets it in there, that's all she wrote. She's just too, too big for McQuay, which I said 
two, three times already. I won't say it again. No, you can say it again. I'm not going to say it till the second half. You have an open forum. Well, what's happening here is that that this game could become a very, very physical game. The refs have to keep it in the control, under control. Quincy Wadley, who was the star of last weekend's victory over Cincinnati, is on the floor. Lamont Barnes, as Al said, sits with two fouls. And a technical foul was called on Jerron Cornell. And mainly now Gene Cady is going to start to, to blow up over there. He's very upset. And um, we got ourselves an early, early uh, argument. There's a lot of tension on these coaches. Both these coaches, what they really want is the opportunity to go against Duke. The dream of the biggest upset. The biggest upset. The one that had the better chance, I would think, would be Temple because of their zone, and Mike Krzyzewski does not have enough time to prepare for Temple's zone. Kevin lied. I don't think that's how he intended to shoot that oh, throw. Oh, I did, I oh, I can't believe it. I thought the, back, uh, the backboard should have broke. I don't think that was plan A, Al. <laughs> Off the backboard. Gene Cady still with a look of disbelief after the technical foul call. Plus, it's a two-shot foul here. Plus, they get the ball out. So you can look at here, a lot of points that they make the foul shots. You could possibly get a six or five-point run here. Sanchez shoots one more. There goes uh, Cady's jacket. Cady's jacket came off first. It's not too long before John. Cady's a competitor. Anytime you play him in anything, he's a competitor. He'll rally this team. Sanchez gets two. The technical foul was called on Jerron Cornell, number 22, lower right. Now what? No, what happened there is Wadley pushed his old teammate. Then the action started after. That's set to five on the floor now for Temple. Sanchez, the point guard, number four. Karcher is Brokenborough, the senior. We could possibly look at a five or a six points this time down court. They got three already, and they now got, nope, nope, now got, nope. <laughs> a foul called on Cornell. I, I think that might have been, I'm not sure. It wasn't on Eldridge. I think Eldridge was being uh, physically aggressive. No, I was wrong. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, thank you. Like I said, you have an open forum. The, yep. um, it's funny how a coach, that's why you can see from here, coaches coach from the floor. Right. And all my life, I was 25 years a coach. I started at Dartmouth. They won't tell anybody because they're ashamed of some of the things I say. Then seven years at Belmont Abbey College and 13 at Marquette University. Coming up the Midwest Regional Semifinal. That tip at 10-26, Miami of Ohio. Wally Serbiak, technical foul called on Katie. Now we have a possibility of maybe seven or eight points this time down over the 10 second line. This could be a possible record. Tell down, Gene. Don't get any more technicals. Don't get put out. Tell down, Gene, Dave. Tell down, Dave. John will have his moment a little bit later. John Cheney. As I said, the tie's loosened, but his jacket isn't off yet. These are two warriors. They've been around for 25, 30 years as leaders. More than a thousand victories between the two, in and out for Broken Burrow. Katie up, urging his team on. Now for two shots now. This is a two-shot foul because it's a technical on the coach or the bench. I'm not sure. Pepe was a great soccer player down in Argentina. And he shoots one more. One thing about foreign players, they can they can shoot three points and they can also shoot from the foul line. They're not much for driving. Now, how many points do I have now? I, I, I now, they, uh, Temple could score eight points on this trip if they get a basket, a three-point or a two-point, it'd be seven points. They put them right back in the game, they gave them a four-point lead. I think a referee's timeout would be proper now to settle everybody down. Well, it's been a 7 nothing run with no time expired. Technical foul on Cornell. Technical foul on Gene Cady. Now Karcher. A 15-11 Temple lead. Karcher drives over Cardinal. There you go. Oh, that ball came down wet. That ball went way up there. Six-point Temple lead. Eldridge. 
Tony Mayfield, as we said, wearing 25 tonight instead of number 20 because he left his jersey in his hotel room. Get the ball to call now. Move without the ball. They're in their zone. Move without the ball. Move the ball quickly and they get a good shot. 12 on the shot clock. There it is if he wants it. Hold okay. on. Wadley. Now Karcher. Good decision that time by Karcher not to shoot. 17-11 with 12 to go. I hammer it down low. Duke has gone now to a zone. Duke and Burrow for three. Excuse me, Purdue. 20-second timeout, Boilermakers. Katie still filled with fury. Well, watch Karcher put so much height in this because Brian Cardinal is up there in the six foot seven eight. He had to shoot over his raised arm. A 13 nothing Temple run helped in no small measure by technical fouls. One called on Jerron Cornell, the other on Gene Cady. What happens now? Good timeout by Gene Cady. Now you got to pay attention a little bit right now, Gene, the coach. Get, they need you right now. Get them back in the ball game. You're not down that far. You're only down nine. What you need is a score. So get the ball into the hands of the guys that can score. Cornell and uh, Cardinal. When was the last time you saw 13 unanswered in three quarters of a minute? Underneath Cardinal, strong move. Got it. Get the ball to Cardinal. He gets all these floor burns. He's the guy that really leads them indirectly with hustle. He is not a dirty player. He's a hard player. Cardinal puts the plug in a 13-point run by Temple. Here's Sanchez. He's guarded by Mayfield. Over to Brokenboro. Cornell out on him. They look inside for Lyde. Karcher defended by Cardinal. Nice solid movement. Got to look for the shot now. Otherwise, we'll have to put up a Hail Mary. It's down to five. Drive by Sanchez. The dish. Oh, nice dish. Sanchez was, Pepe was coming down the left side and seen Lyde free underneath on the right side. Lyde perfect from the field. Four for four. The freshman from Washington, D.C. This one out of bounds. What Temple does with their zone, they block your eyes so you can't pass, and they double team you. Sanchez from Bahia Blanca, Argentina. Duke won earlier there in the Sunday regional final here. Temple or Purdue will advance to meet the Blue Devils. Sunday at 2.40 earlier. Strong second half for the Blue Devils. They win at 78-61. Trajan Langdon complimented his 24 points with eight rebounds. And 21 Duke's second chance points in that game for Southwest Missouri State's six. Trajan wants to get to the final four. He's never been there, and he's he's a fifth-year senior. Well, obviously one of the better shooters in the country. And now you said this matchup zone would give Duke as much more problems than what Temple presents. If Temple can score on the offensive end, and what happens with this zone, Duke doesn't have time to practice against it. He only got one day. Big barrier by Cornell. That's his third three. And he cuts the margin to six. Cornell with 11 early bas uh, points now for the Boilermakers. 22-16. Of course, they're, they're here scouting today. The three assistants tonight, so is Mike Krzyzewski. But they don't know which team's going to win. So they got to figure which team, whatever team wins, then tomorrow they're going to take their team and, and teach them into, into breaking down the 1-3-1 matchup zone. Is there any sleep tonight for the winning coaches? Not, not, not for the head coaches. You approve. Wow. He doesn't shoot that often. Bueno. At the other end, Purdue answers. 24-18, under 10 to go first half. Temple knocked off Cincinnati and Boston last week. Purdue got here by virtue of a victory over Texas first, and then Miami. Wave it off, traveling. He made a nice move down. Catcher, he did not panic, but when he gave his head and shoulder fake, he walked. Reminder, many of you will be going down to St. Louis for the second game there. Wally Zerbiak and Miami of Ohio against Kentucky, seated number three in the Midwest. That semifinal will tip at 10:26 Eastern time. 
Mike Robinson is on the floor now for Purdue. Number 23, his first appearance. Here's Cornell from Mayfield and a foul underneath. Too much hands that time, I believe, on Cornell. I'm not sure. Here we go. Called on Robinson. Robinson. Robinson just got in the ball game. Robinson had come into Purdue with a tremendous uh, high school reputation. Mike Robinson, McDonald's All-American. Now here's Rashid Brokenborough. Sanchez. And Karcher backs out. Nice defense by Cameron Stevens. The Boilers have improved their up-tempo, their defense. Ooh, there's a dagger. Wow. Karcher, 27-18. And Karcher has eight points. Jerron Cornell, three threes already. Cameron Stevens calls for it. Sanchez goes for the steal. There's Cardinal. And Sanchez clears it. That's the first time the Boilers from Purdue got a couple of reshots uh, re on the offensive board. Quincy Watley missed the Atlantic 10 tournament. Here's Karcher for three again. Oh, boy, is, is he positive. He knows. He's hot. He knows he's real hot. When a guy drops his head and he wants that three, and he gets it. Craig Gumbel in New York. Temple taking charge against Purdue. We'll keep you updated on what happens there. But those of you awaiting game two from the Trans World Dome in St. Louis, Midwest Regional Semifinal between Miami and Kentucky. That game is set to tip off momentarily. We will send you to St. Louis and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer right after this. In a minute. From downtown, deep. Karcher with 11 points, perfect from three-point range. He's hit all three. And Purdue has used its three 20-second timeouts. And used them wisely. They're good. Don't, he, he's blowing his timeouts, but he has to stop Temple. They, because if Temple gets ahead of you with this zone, they'll drive you crazy. Nice play. Yes, it was. But the ball knocked away. And here's Sanchez for Temple. Broken Burrow back to Karcher, and they'll go to the half-court set. Pepe Sanchez, very few turnovers, very few. He runs the show. He is the coach on the floor. He is the guy that Coach John Shaney works the most with. Watley. Nice move. Oh, boy. And an offensive board for Lyde. Gets it back. Gets the roll. Oh, that ball did that usual victory lap all the way around. I'm going to tell you about Lyde. He's only a freshman, and if his body develops and gets muscular by his senior year, and I keep telling John Cheney, don't retire, hang around, John. Basketball needs you. John Cheney in his 17th season. There's Lyde getting ready to go after he gets the roll. Everything's happened perfect for him today. The last foul shot he made was... St. Louis at the Trans World Dome, ready for Wally's World. Round three of the NCAA tournament for the Cinderella Miami Red Hawks. And Wally Zerbiak taking on the national champions, the Kentucky Wildcats, with the winner to face Michigan State on Sunday for the right to go to the Final Four. Jim Nance and Billy Packer here courtside in St. Louis. And uh, Billy, we're all fired up for this one for sure. What do you expect tonight out of uh, Miami against uh, Kentucky? Real contrast. Again, much like the first game, Miami wants to play it half court at a time. Tubby Smith is going to come after him with 10 men. He's going to try to wear him down, keep the game close for a while, and then try to blow him out in the second half. Let's see if Miami can has the pace to do that. Well, Wally Zerbiak is the cover boy everywhere around the country this week, newspapers, magazines, and why not after his two performances, including the one against Washington in the first round that was one of the best performances in the history of the tournament, single performance. Absolutely. In that day, on the first day, he actually outscored or equaled the production of four total teams in the tournament with 43 points in a big game. All right, senior leadership, the story with Kentucky. These seniors stepped up against Kansas to win the game in overtime, and Scott Padgett specifically starred as uh, he came in with 29 points and hit the big three as well. A career high.
high just when they needed it. And as he said, this team does not want to go home. There was that step back three that put him in a position to put that game into overtime against Kansas, one of the best games of the tournament so far. All right, the coaches, Charlie Coles from Miami, and Tubby Smith from Kentucky, and their thoughts on this matchup tonight. Well, it's going to be important that we establish our tempo and, and force them to play our game. That's always our strategy going in every game, but it's easier said than done. It's like going to the dentist, you know? They got so, many, they got so much equipment around there that you don't, you say this hurts as bad as this. The needle, the pliers, all those things. That's what Kentucky has. Charlie Coles directing Miami to the Sweet 16 for the first time since it's been a 64-team tournament. Back in the days when it was uh, a limited field, they made it three times to the round of 16. There's Wally along with John Estick, who gave him 18 in the win against Utah. Damon Frierson has not missed a minute of action for Miami in this tournament. Rob Mestis has been so efficient, and Jason Stewart. And Tubby Smith without, without a loss in the tournament at Kentucky. Taking them to the national championship last year with Padgett, Bradley, and Moo Evans on the front line in the backcourt. It's Wayne Turner and the freshman Desmond Allison. Well, one of the magic moments. It's a family ritual, if you will. Quiet little moment. When Miami takes the floor, Charlie Coles finds in the stands his wife, Dolores. They point to one another, and they freeze that finger for just a moment, looking at each other to let them know that their thoughts are as one. Jim, the first couple I ever saw do that was John and Nell Wooden. John used to turn, slap that program in his hands, turn around and point to Nell. That was a magic moment. Would like everything else uh, associated with John Wooden. Very special. All right, Miami's the 10th seed, already having knocked off Washington. And last year's national runner-up, Utah, They've taken on last year's second place team and beat them, and now can they take on the champs tonight? Kentucky controls the opening tip. And the first team will get a run for about eight minutes, and then we're going to see Tubby go to that second team. But this Miami club has a lot of guys that play 40-minute games. Let's see if they can do it tonight. Pass it. Beautiful interior passing by Kentucky. Bradley gets the assist. Zerbiak tried to come over and help that left Padgett open. Very unusual to see Miami have a breakdown like that inside. Padgett is on Zerbiak. This is a Miami team that has turned it over only 11 times in two games. Just a phenomenal standard. But here they almost turn it over on their first possession. Stewart. Too strong, and look at Lou Evans come away for Kentucky. Surprised Stewart didn't take the jump shot right away. He had it. Turner, jumper. Wayne Turner, it is tournament time, and he always comes through. And he reaches in, though, on the inbounds pass and gets a piece of Mestis. Turner is amazing, Jim. All year long, he didn't look for the shot first. He looked to penetrate, drive, penetrate, and dish. But he's looked for that jump shot. You can remember against Kansas early in that ball game. He looked for that pull-up jumper. Very unusual shooting style. But he's a senior that knows how to play. Zerbiak's first shot of the night. Yes, sir. Well, Padgett got caught just as we saw in the Washington game. Nobody helping out on the hedge move. So Wally Zerbiak read it perfectly. And they're going right over the top of his head here. So after Wally buries the three, Miami can come back now and take the quick lead. Jim not turning over the ball, using the clock, trying to keep it half court at a time is the key for this ball club. John Estick outside. Long rebound. Nice blocking. Allison. Nice blocking out by Kentucky. Padgett, he'll try a three of his own. Hashimu with the putback. And Jim, even if Kentucky misses shots early, that's what Tubby would like because it forces tempo of the game. He does not want to play half court at a time. What a matchup, Padgett and Serbiak, two of the stars of the first week of this tournament. And what's good about them, Jim, they are multifaceted players. They can guard people, they can make passes, they can rebound, they can shoot. 
Hodgett's still talking to Bradley, saying, hey, when he comes off a screen, you've got to help me meet him. That was called on Allison, away from the ball. Isn't it amazing? His freshman, Zerbiak, averaged eight a game. Padgett basically didn't even play. Scored 28 points the whole year. And here they are now as key players to the natural maturation process of becoming seniors. Padgett at Kentucky had to play that year behind a whole stack of talent. Zerbiak was a freshman on a team that really belonged to Devin Davis at that time. No doubt about whose team it is now at Miami. Zerbiak, second shot, also perfect. Pick and roll. Boy, a great shooter, Jim, and there are guys that are exceptions, but it'll be guys that can square up to the basket and keep everything square on the shot, and Zerbiak does it fundamentally as well as any guy that's been in college basketball a long time. Evans comes up short, good box out, and Wally comes away with it. Now, they don't want to run too much in this game. You obviously have to run some to keep Kentucky honest so that they're not crashing the boards. But they don't want to go up and down the floor with this team. Stewart with the ball hit four big threes in the game against Utah. Really turned it around in the first uh, you half. You can see what the scouting report says. And Evans is right up on it. He's taking the three away from him. Stewart steps out of bounds trying to make the move. Jim, we talk about squaring up. Now watch these shoulders and everything facing right at the basket. Just a perfect release. And a perfect rotation. Serbiak has all five of Miami's points. Turner in traffic and a reach in on Stewart. Oh, a knee to knee cr cruncher by Turner. Turner's had two shots to his uh, physical body here and he's hurting a little bit. And how about Mestis has taken Turner on after he had Andre Miller last week with two of the best point guards in all of basketball and could if he had to go one more game yeah. take on the team Cleves and then have perhaps William Avery waiting for him in, in St. Petersburg oh thank you that last foul was not uh, called on Stewart it was Mestis instead Fireson almost had a breakaway a lot of back screening here looking for that lob double team on Bradley partially blocked Stewart with the strong hands comes out with it. And Stewart, whose wrist is normally taped in practice, playing without that, of course, in this ballgame. Good screen. <laughs> Evans, a solid defender out here. Stewart just can't get a good look. Wally for the lead in his first miss, and here's the rebound by Turner. Well, he's going to have to take some shots if not what he wants just to get things going. Ashimu has it taken away by Serbia. He wants to drive on Padgett. Pull up jumper. And Allison with the good position. As I said, they're going to have to run some, but they don't want to get in this pace of a game. Turn in and out. And a foul called on Kentucky. Jim, when you think of the number of minutes these guys are playing, they've got three guys averaging over 34 minutes a game. To come to the first break, Kentucky 6-5. 3.54 till the halftime break. Temple had a 13-0 run fueled by two technical fouls earlier in the half. Coming up at the Pennzoil half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg with a tournament update and a live look in at the Miami of Ohio and Kentucky game that's going on simultaneous to ours down in St. Louis. All I know is Tubby Smith from Kentucky. He is a tournament coach. Come tournament time, whether it's at Tulsa or Georgia or at Kentucky, he just uh, turns on his afterburners. Set the five on the floor for Purdue now. Cornell, Stevens, Cardinal. Here's long range ball from Jerron Cornell. That's his third, I think, from three ball land. The fourth, excuse me, from three ball land. Yeah, they're going to make a run sooner or later. Largest lead was 19. Karcher measures the shot, goes inside for Rollison, and he's fouled. Watch how quick Cornell releases. As soon as he gets the ball, sees an opening, quick release with the left hand, all nylon. Now we got the big freshman, Rollison. Let's see how he takes a foul shot. Oh, boy, look at the size of those shoes. They look like dry docks. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the size of the shoes. You got to get a better angle from the side. <laughs> uh, you 
got to get off your heels. Hey, whoa, look at these boats. They're aircraft carriers. Woo! I'd hate that. First, I'd hate that to pay to feed them, but I'd hate that to pay to clothe them. <laughs> Let's see if he makes this one. Come on, son, make this one. Big there you go. Oh, oh, boy, young guy. Cunningham and Stevens. Now Sanchez picks that. There's the problem for Carson Cunningham and the turnovers. Eldridge from behind, and Sanchez gets it back. Sanchez runs the show completely. Back to him. Set up, got a clock in his head. Got to put the ball down, just beat the five count. Now if he picks it up, he gets five more seconds. Cornell starts to switch, but he leaves Karcher open. That was another. That was a high pick and roll. I've never seen one set up that way. And believe me, John Shaney set it up. Way outside. Left side to Eldridge. Cunningham, entry pass. Nice touch pass to John Allison, the freshman, who's come on, but he loses control of it. John, you got to get up with up a body strength. You got to eat a lot of bananas and that type of stuff, but you can't let someone pull out of your hands like that. But you're only a freshman, you learn. Allison, number 54 for Purdue. Rasheed Brokenborough, penetration, jump stop, up off the glass. Beautiful. Ooh, Philadelphia, mustard on your pretzel. That's right, steak and sandwich. <laughs> Excellent play by Brokenborough and a 19 point lead that equals the largest of the ball game. Work yourself free, Cornell. Work yourself free. Cunningham cans the three pointer. Cunningham is an unbelievable dead eye. John Shaney got a little bit upset with that one, but John Shaney is always looking for perfection. Only coach at two schools, Shaney State and Temple. And in the process, 604 victories. Look at this guy, the temple, the, the coach on the floor, the clock in his head, the drop off. He'll drop it off to somebody, a penetrating pop drop. There's plenty of time in the shot clock. There's the screen up above. Here comes the drop. No, he took the shot. Bingo! Hey, 45-27 with less than 90 to go first half. Pepe has 10. Lyde has 14. And the constant zone, too aggressive that time. That will be the fifth foul on Temple. Purdue has committed eight. Foul is on Sanchez, his first. And don't forget they played most of the first half without their starting center. Lamont Barnes picked up two quick fouls. Uh, you saw the substitution. Chad Kirkhoff comes on, the junior guard for Gene Cady's team, replacing Cunningham. And Wadley is back in for Sanchez for John Cheney's bunch. Allison. Allison's quick. He just has to get more strength. Little drop step by Allison. He is fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. John Allison, 6'10", 215 pound freshman. You see the contact, contrast with Rorison of Temple. I think if he makes his second foul shot, I think you'll see pressure up court. There's a quick team in there now for the Borderless. For complete tournament coverage with live scores, stats, and more, check out Tournament Live only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Under Keyword CBS Sports Line. Allison gets two at the line. Good job, young guy. Only a freshman. Pressure foul shots that time. There's the pressure up the court I was telling about. It's 2 1. It's 2 2 1. It's not broken yet. Now it is broken. Wadley. Way out to Broken Burrow. Guarded by Kirkhoff. You got to remember, Pepe Sanchez is not in there now, so they probably will turn this ball over. They don't have the settling influence. Kirkhoff tenaciously guarding Broken Borough. Now they get in the hands of Karcher. Eldridge guards him, but guess what? Coming back to the backboard. That's a slight angle. You can see the basket from there, but not the full basket. 16 points for Mark Karcher. All of this ignited by a 13-0 run in 45 seconds. Two technical fouls, the key part of it. Called on. Cornell and Katie of Purdue. Here's Eldridge. Once Eldridge. Good hit. Good hit. Solid player. 
Has no weakness to his games, but no outstanding strength. That cuts the margin to 15. Wadley guarded by Kirkhoff. Keep it yourself, Wadley, and put the shot up. It'll be too late. Five second count. No. End of the half. Katie's not sure about that. 47 32 at the break. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. Our score at halftime, the Temple Owls 47 32 leaders over Purdue. I'm joined by my partner, Clark Kellogg. This is a different Temple Owl team, much more scoring than we expect to see from the Owls. It really has been throughout the tournament. You talk about their three point shooting, the dominance inside of Kevin Lyde to complement the outside shooting of Sanchez and Mark Karcher. When they defend and rebound, you know that's going to happen, but when they make shots, they're really hard to handle. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, the other game taking place now is down in St. Louis. At the Midwest Regional Semifinal between Miami and Kentucky, the Wildcats off to a 13 to 5 lead. Let's take you there live and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Remember, the winner of this game takes on the Michigan State Spartans on Sunday. Let's go to Trans World Dome in St. Louis. Kentucky's second team comes in and scores seven unanswered. The starters have returned now for the Wildcats as the bench. Gives them an eight point gap. Well, this is their strategy, and it's been so effective. And you know who the biggest rooters were when they were in there? That first team sitting on that sidelines, just rooting those guys on. A lot of respect for them. Nobody on Kentucky's team plays more than 30 minutes a game. Padgett oh, bounced pass, and Bradley was cutting to the hole. Padgett realizes it was a mistake that he threw the ball. Bradley really had the cut going. Can you go back to that team in 96 that was so deep. I don't think they had a starter on that team that played more than 25 minutes. So uh, Tubby is emulating what Rick Pitino did in the year that went to the national crown. Miami's missed its last seven attempts for this matchup. Evans is, is so tough defensively size matchup wise. Frierson just can't get away from him. Then on the shot clock, and Mestis looking for Zerbiak. Mestis doesn't want to shoot. Taylor, he was a scorer a year ago, and it's come up empty this year. They need to go ahead and set some solid screens for Zerbiak to try to get Pageant off him and get the jump shot going. You just look at this club and say, where are they going to score? Allison blocked from behind by Frierson. Saturday on CBS, martial arts superstar Semo Hong and Arsenio Hall. Kicking the fun back into Saturday night. Martial law Saturday on CBS. One thing you can credit Miami, the only thing keeping them in the game, they are a solid defensive ball club, but offensively tonight you can see where they just are going to struggle. They don't have a low post game, and there's great matchups by Kentucky defensively on the perimeter. And a push off, and there's all on Zerbiak. Easy call. While he goes out and tries to. The hedge on the move, but then made contact with Turner. Miami and Kentucky's past are uh, intertwined at a couple of occasions. Miami's first year of basketball was 1905. There were three and three, and two of their wins came at the expense of Kentucky. <laughs> but Kentucky's won, world. Kentucky's won the last 17 matchups. And Allison gets the soft roll off the front of the rim for a three. The young man's become a great role player on this team. He can guard, he can rebound, he scores just enough that you've got to guard him. Tough pass, Serbiak travel. Yep. Here we see good square up shot, nice rotation, and you can see he's going to have more scoring opportunities as his career develops, Jim. He was primarily brought in as one of those all around athletes. Great football talent. And he's moved into the starting lineup and fits in there very nicely with this ball club. Ashimu with a three point try. And Turner in the corner saves it for Kentucky. Can 
Kentucky when they play well have good perimeter shooting in their big games when they don't have perimeter shooting they struggle traveling call but tonight they're just so big and they've got so many weapons inside they might not have to be strong on the perimeter hand check against Allison this is a 10 nothing Kentucky run right now you know the other thing Jim that Miami really and this is what Charlie Coles really has to be careful of there comes times when Cinderella realizes that he's up against a force that's uh, a lot better and at that point kids aren't going to give up but they sometimes accept their plight and I think that Miami right now although it's still very early in the game is realizing they are just not getting off shots against this Kentucky club. This matches Miami's biggest deficit of the tournament. Let's not forget they were down 11 to Utah in the first half. See, there's the problem. Zerbiak did exactly what he had to do in the pick and roll with his double team, but he gives it to a guy who's not capable of scoring. So Kentucky in command uh, over the first half of the first half of this game. 16-5, the Wildcats in the lead. Now, earlier today at East Rutherford, New Jersey, the top seed in the East, the Duke Blue Devils, knocked off Southwest Missouri State 78-61. Duke band drumming up some support. Blue Devils didn't need much help. Watch Allen Phillips here. They stayed close early within six on that nice drive by Phillips. Hoosiers, a real-life story. Duke wasn't impressed. Trajan Langdon. He had 24, three of them right there. They led 39-30 at the half. Second half, transition game, William Avery, long range three, and Chris Carrowell. Passes it, there he is, Trajan Langdon again. Four of six from behind the arc. And Duke, 39 in the first half, 39 in the second half, they win at 78-61. Earlier tonight in St. Louis, the Spartans of Michigan State, 54-46 winners over the Oklahoma Sooners. Mateen Cleaves. Warming up, he didn't know what was awaiting him. Second half, Michigan State opened up a seven-point lead. Eduardo Nahara drives for the layup, and then a scary moment. Play. A very scary moment, Greg. Take a look at Nahara setting the screen. He gets the forehead of Mateen Cleaves right to his chin. He was out cold for a bit, did get up and return to action. Later in the second half, Michigan State began to open things up, and then Andre Hudson closed the door on Oklahoma. Hudson finishes after a couple of Spartan misses. Michigan State moves on and will play the winner of the Kentucky-Miami University game. On Sunday, the Spartans win 54-46. to To update you on the condition of those players, Mateen Cleaves of Michigan State is said to be all right. He will no doubt be suffering a little bit of a headache, but Eduardo not Nahara has undergone x-rays. They're examining him for a possible broken jaw. There is no word as yet on his condition. I want to remind you what's coming up next on uh, CBS Sports tomorrow. 1230 Eastern Time. Men's Division II National Championship game from Louisville. Kentucky Wesleyan will face Metropolitan State. And then following that, the Road to the Final Four show will bring you the latest news and previews of regional championship action at 3 p.m. Eastern. We will be joined by Utah head coach Rick Majerus. Then at 3.30 Eastern Time, a regional finals doubleheader. Game one between number 10 Gonzaga, top seed UConn at 3.40 in Phoenix. 6 p.m. Eastern Time from the south in Knoxville. Fourth seed Ohio State against number three seed St. John's. That's coming up tomorrow. We'll get you back to the second half of the game that you're watching, Purdue against Temple. Take a look at Mark Karcher connecting from all over the court in the first half. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. to go in the half and Evans nice nice job by Taylor they call it a tie up and the arrow belongs to Miami well I think that should have been the ball out of bounds by Kentucky because the ball touched Evans who was out of bounds so consequently that should have been Miami's ball without the arrow we've got the under eight timeout Zerbiak has all of Miami's points the rest of his team 0 for 8 from the field he's a man's man and I know him for many, many years, and I see him about every two years. What I like about him, he never left the neighborhood. Now listen up to this, and he'll give me a whipping for what I'm going to say. What I like about him, he has one bathroom in his house. Now all you people out there with big shots and so on, here's a guy that never, never left the neighborhood. The bus stops in front of his house in Philadelphia, and he has one bathroom. Can you imagine any of your children living with one bathroom? Uh -uh. <laughs> Sanchez. <laughs> Karcher sets the screen. Cardinal comes out on the switch. They go back. Karcher for three. Oh, Ooh, I thought that was out of his range. 
They, they do pick and rolls any place on the court. Mark Karcher is six points above his per game average. He's got 19 points now. Mayfield. Up, no good. Rebound. Wadley. Mayfield penetrated into the, the paint and got stung because he picked up his dribble. Played for Rufus King in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I live, by choice. Everyone thinks I'm stuck out there. <laughs> Same house yourself, right? Yep, 36 years. One bathroom? No two. Well, that's right, and numbers are good. Carnell. Stevens, not nope, too strong. Got the uh, put back, circles the world, and comes out. Lights body, not only his height, but his body he eats up so much space that anything within three feet with those long arms, he ends up uh, getting the rebound. Gene Cady's going to go back to his bench. In a moment. Third foul called on Cardinal. Four burns again. And the substitution now. The one break that the Boilers have, there's over 16 minutes left in the ball game, and it seems like a lot. They're down 16 points, which is equivalent to any other team than Temple. It, with Temple, it might be equivalent to 20 points, but they can get back into this match if they can get a run going and create some turnovers, but they got to put pressure up court. Gene Cady going deep into his bench. Here's Watley, and he's fouled by Mike Robinson, who just replaced Cardinal in the lineup as Cardinal picked up his third. They did not straighten out their defensive assignment. Eldridge get caught uh, not, not in the right position. Robinson tried to make up for it and foul, but the possible three-point play. Watley back at the line. Maynard Lewis, a freshman from Terre Haute, Indiana, is also on the floor now, number 12 for Gene Cady. Now, you can't hurry against this zone, Purdue. You've got to take your patience, take time. Too quick of a shot that time. Kevin Lyde up to get the rebound. He's got six rebounds to complement the number of points he scored in the ball game, which is 14. Notice how Pepe doesn't kill his dribble. He keeps it alive. Carter, he's hot. That one out of bounds off the hand of Rasheed Brokenborough. 15.48 remaining. 54.35 Owls. 2.22 to go in the half. Miami possession down four as we check the data bank. Miami facing Kentucky three times in tournament history, and all of these were in the round of 16. Not back in the days, uh, though, there was no 64 team field. And there and, were consolation games. And, and Kentucky has uh, knocked them out every time they got to the Sweet 16. They're, they've lost to them every time. Well, for historians up there, they saw the year 1978. It was St. Louis, it was Kentucky, and they won at, from that game, went on to win the national championship right here in St. Louis. Joe Hall, Jack Gibbons having his brilliant game against Duke University. Zerbiak short this time. This is Kentucky's first appearance in the city of St. Louis since winning that championship in 78. Inside Prince, great pass from Evans. You can imagine what's happened mentally to the Kentucky players. It looked like this game was going to be a blowout. I mean, they, you know, they could sense the kill early on. Miami well-schooled, trying to sit back here and slow it down. They don't want Kentucky running on them. So now it's up for Tubby to get his team to regroup offensively. They had been down 11. Zerbiak's three a moment ago. Had he made it, would have cut it to one. Kentucky's in the zone right now. Zerbiak looking for a hole. They ought to try to get him the ball for his jump shot. It's down to seven seconds. Zerbiak way out high. Pass deflected by Turner. They waited too long to get him the ball. 1.15 to go in the half. The fifth turnover of the night for Miami. Well, we saw St. John's go to the zone defense so effectively. Now here's Kentucky, probably a man-to-man -man team, and they're going to the zone defense. You heard Mike Jarvis talk about it. He's going to be given clinics on zone defense now. Traveling. Coming up, Pinsoil at the half, Dragon Clark. We'll update you on all the tournament happenings, plus we'll have a live look in at Purdue and Temple. That's all coming up on Pinsoil at the half. Saul and, Smith comes back to the final 57 seconds of the half. And, and the reason for that is Tubby really upset that his team is not showing good patience on the offensive end of the floor. Ten field goals by the Cats, matched by ten turnovers as well. 
And let's see if they stay in the zone. Prince out on top. A little one two two matchup. Zerbiak going to get a jump shot off in his zone. They brought another outside shooter in, Grunkemeyer. Number three. They're going to set a screen for Zerbiak for the jump shot. Using all of that clock again. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Ball stripped away, and it's Miami ball, but only five on the shot clock. That's a good call. Sure. Let's see what they can set up with five on the clock. Zerbiak had been uh, inbounding it from underneath, but with only five on the clock, they want to take their shooter out of the loop. Inside, Zerbiak. And we'll go to the line for two. Did a nice job right there. Everybody thought he was going to curl to the outside and just broke right onto the basket. Smith, Smith is on him. You can see him. Saul expected him to pounce back out for the jump shot. You see that? And he just takes the screen and goes right inside. This Miami team, fourth on the season in the whole country, free throw percentage. Tops in the NCAAs after the first two rounds. Wally Zerbiak, born in Madrid. His father, a player over for Real Madrid, and later over in Italy, played pro ball in the Canary Islands, and he didn't move to the States, did young Wally, till the age of six to Long Island. Jim, it was surprising. Uh, in their own tournament, they only shot 28 of 47, 59% for the foul line, not characteristic for them. Of course, they were beaten by Kent in the championship game there. Final 14 seconds of the half. They Kentucky are, leading by four. They are really expending a lot of energy playing great half-court defense. Smith left open. Not this time. And Kamara battles for it. One second. Smith in the air. Oh, what a shot to go to the locker room. Heads up play. That's the only thing he can do, Jim. Just release it on the catch. And his brother loved it. Gigi loves it. Takes a few nods of congratulations, as any big brother would. Look at this. He, this is the only play he can make. Doesn't come down with it. Releases. That should have been a three. Should that have been a three? I don't know, Jim. And I Check it out, because that. watch where he launches himself from. Yeah, they counted it as what? a two. Should have been a three. They, on the board, it's only a two. This, well, hey, we may have caught something here. That's and they can review that. That should be a three. Definitely a three, because although he is over the line when he shoots the ball, he left from outside the three in the air. That's a three-point play. There's no one checking the replay, and that is something that can be reviewed. It should have been a three. They've only credited Kentucky with a two. So at this point, we'll give it the score on the board. 25-19 Kentucky and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message. And a word from your local station. Yeah, Kentucky! Yeah, sports.